Hey guys, it's Broken Angel, and today we are playing a visual novel called Parasite in Love. So basically, you have a parasite taking over your brain, and you're falling in love with it. <laughs> I thought it sounded interesting, so let's give this a go. Man killed by brain-eating amoeba. News reporter, a rare infection from a brain-eating amoeba is being blamed for the death of a North Carolina man. He was swimming in a water park earlier this month. The amoeba is usually found in shallow fresh water. It can cause severe headaches, fever, nausea, and vomiting, which can, uh, sorry, I can't talk, uh, which can progress into having a stiff neck, seizures, and a coma. It's only infectious when water is forced up the nose during activities such as diving and water skiing. According to the Centers for Disease Control, the CDC, the amoeba is rare but overwhelmingly deadly. In the last 57 years, there have been only 145 known infections, but of those, only four survived. Oof, okay. The CDC says the illness is particularly difficult to treat because it is notoriously hard to detect and progresses so quickly. The next time you go swimming, wear a nose plug and avoid activities that involve being fully submerged in freshwater areas. This is Gabe Stewart, MBS News. Interesting. Day one. <laughs> I'm excited for this, sorry. <laughs> You feel a rush of happiness as you continue your hike because you hear nothing but nature around you. The birds are chirping, the wind is rustling through the tree branches and water is trickling nearby. It is so peaceful compared to your busy office that is currently far, far away. The hundreds of emails you get as a project manager can wait until you return from your vacation. Lovely. Oh, how nice is the graphics? You finally arrive at the lake. The photos you looked through online couldn't convey the beauty of this place. You're so glad to stop here before entering the cabin you rented for your little vacation. Time to swim is a reward! Oh no, she's gonna get the eating amoeba! The hours you spent hiking make your dip in the water all the more refreshing. Waves of relief wash over you as you swim around, and after a while, you let yourself float to enjoy the moment. You close your eyes and your breathing slows. The sun heats up your face while the water cools your back. You hear a scream and a wave pushes you to the side. You stabilize yourself, coughing and sputtering for air, trying to clear water from your mouth and nose. Sounds like someone did a cannonball. <laughs> A boy laughs as he bobs up right next to you. He smiles brightly without a care in the world. Thank you, buddy. You just diseased me. Marlo. Be careful. You could have hurt us both. But nothing happened. His mother calls for him. He swims away. As he steps out of the water, his mother already has a towel in hand and dries his hair. You are a little envious. Clumsy with your words outside of work, you have a hard time connecting more with the people you love. Your friends and family do like to spend time with you, but you sometimes feel lacking when you try to show them the same affection. Ugh, feels. Maybe you would have an easier time if you had family of your own. Your friend did tell you that her instincts as a new mother help immensely when talk about taking care of a baby. You hope that in your case the instinct would take over and taking, uh, oh, taking, I keep reading it as taking, <laughs> talking to your child. How great would it be to have such a deep connection? <sighs> you sigh and rise from the lake. That was quick. Oh, this is so pretty. You arrive in the cabin you have booked for the next two weeks. The space is too big for just one person, but it also feels luxurious to have such a space for yourself. You're basically checking this place out as a vacation home for the future family that you always dream of. Even if you don't have a partner, the thought of taking a trip together fills you with joy. By the fly uh, fly Jesus Lord. By the fireplace you look at the couches where you could snuggle with your future family. You smile, imagining your child imitating a bear as they wear the fur that drapes over the cushions. 
You stretch your arms as you yawn. Time to unpack and get settled. You put your hand into your bag and take out your vacuum sealed clothes. You pack them this way to make space for other things. Your wallet, smartphone, food, toiletries and some books to pass the time. That is very smart. After putting all your stuff away, you go and take a shower. Half an hour later, you leave the bathroom refreshed and donning a white robe provided by the rental. Walking to the couches with a grin and a glass of white wine. Now this feels like a true vacation. You take your phone out and check it out of habit from your job. <laughs> Spookle. <laughs> Uh, messages? You have messages from dad, mum, co-workers and friends. Oh, we can actually read these messages. Your dad always sends short messages like cloud with a photo of the sky attached. You must have inherited his blunt way with words. Yeah, it sounds like my dad as well. Co-worker, have you seen my last email? You immediately regret looking at this. I'm just going to go through everything. Hey, excuse me, I was finished. Mum. <clears throat> Marlo, when are you coming home? You can't just leave for months, my dear. I bet you need some fresh vegetables from our garden too. She likes to nag and remind you to do things, even though it's been years since you've moved out. It can be annoying, but you know she's doing it with love. Uh, friend? So when are we going on our trip? We've been trying to organise this for years. Let's at least try to make plans by the end of this year. You sigh. It's gotten so much harder to meet up since your friend group became adults. Photos? Your mother sent you some digital copies of old family photos. When you were little, your family used to visit the big greenhouse in the city centre quite often. There are also some photos of you with co-workers. When did you take these selfies with them? You must have gotten drunk at the last office party. Any milestone has to be celebrated is the motto of your boss. The parties happen pretty often. You don't know how your boss is able to make the company pay for so many, but you don't dare ask him. You scroll further back and finally find some photos with your friends. The last time you guys met was to say goodbye to a friend in the group who was leaving the country. You should call them sometime soon. <sighs> Close vein. You yawn and decide to go to bed. Day two. The sun warms your cheek and birds chirp as you wake up. What a peaceful morning. It's been a while since you've slept, slept this well. You check your phone and notice you've gotten a message from your dad. <laughs> Attached is a photo of a flower he saw on his way to work. It brightens your day when it, whenever he does this. That's actually pretty cute. You want to send him a photo back, so you decide that today you'll explore your surroundings, take pictures, and make some bookmarks with the flowers you find. After a quick breakfast, shower, and change of clothes, you are ready. Once you're outside, you take a deep breath. You can smell damp moss, flowers, and wet grass. It must have rained a little during the night. You take your smartphone out and start your hike. Your shoes sink in every time you take a step on the pine needle covered ground. As you look around, the wind caresses the leaves above you, making their shadows dance on the ground. Soon you spot some small purple flowers growing nestled between fallen tree trunks. You squat down and take a picture up close. You stare proudly at your photo. A dewdrop on one of the petals reflects the sunlight, making the scene feel more magical. You stand up and send it to your dad, or at least you try to. You see your bad reception and give it another attempt, but it doesn't go through. You decide to send it once you have a better connection in the cabin. Then you look at the flowers again. Upon further thought, they would be pretty decoration for a bookmark when dried. You carefully pick one and make your way back. After you put your bag away, you fold a sheet of paper around the flower and tuck it inside a book. You press the book shut and then stack several more books on top of it. That should make it flat and dried for a while. Oh, it is pretty. Then you remember to send the photo. Your dad just answers with, nice, then seconds later he sends a photo back. <laughs> New wooden toy, that's so cute. 
You chuckle. You used to make them together when you were younger. I miss you, Dad. You shake your head, a little embarrassed after those words escape your mouth. Somehow you can't bring yourself to send those words. Mm. Yeah, I know the feeling of that too. You just write back, nice. <laughs> after a long bubble bath, you are ready to prepare dinner. You cut the meat on a chopping board almost in a rhythmic fashion. After a while of only eating takeout, it feels good to cook for yourself again. <laughs> Are you cooking? It looks good. You let go of your knife too fast and it clatters onto the counter. You whip your head around. No one was there, but you had clearly heard a voice. <laughs> Slowly you move around the cabin, peeking into each corridor, but you found no sign of anyone else in the house. Still anxious, you go back to the kitchen. You start the stove and see the meat in a pan. The fat glistens and the smell makes your mouth water. You almost forget the previous strange incident. Hungry and impatient, you grab a fork and tear into the meat. It's a little rare and bloody. You enjoy the flavour and relax, feeling the stress from earlier leave your body. Putting the odd incident behind you, you are still able to find some enjoyment today. Yeah, a little bit odd. Day three. The morning alarm almost gives you a heart attack. With half shut eyes, you search for your phone and hastily turn off the alarm. You sit up and massage your temples. It's been a while since you had a headache this bad. Sluggishly, you crawl out of bed and make your way to the kitchen. You brew some tea in hopes that it will help and take, and take it with you to the living room. Are you feeling off because of all the hiking you did? Or was it the rare meat? Several hours later. Ugh. You breathe heavily as you lean against the cold white ceramic of the toilet. The last time you had to vomit was after the last office party, after securing a multi-million dollar deal for the company. The constant flow of alcohol was the only thing making the loud music bearable. But the next morning, you had the hangover from hell. You can't remember much else. Ooh, um, check the kitchen for bad food. You know you bought the food just before the hike, but you can't help but suspect that something you ate might have gone bad. No, not the bread or anything else in the kitchen. It's all fresh. Was it really food poisoning? Could it be some suppressed stress from work finally resurfacing? Or was it too much sun after being holed up in an office for so long? You grab your phone and sit down on the couch. You decide to research some more with your phone and open your browser in order to look up your symptoms. <laughs> That's what I do. And I swear every time it's like, hey, you have this and you're dying. <laughs> search. Oh, I actually have to search it. Um, what, uh, how do I word it? Headache, well this is how I would do it. Headache, vomiting, <laughs> um, Uh, possible... Oh, nope, okay, I guess that's what we're going to search. The results suggest vomiting might have caused... Might, might have been caused by an infection. Food poisoning, motion, motion sickness, brain injury, or migraines. If it lasts for more than two days, you should call a doctor. Hmm... Is that all I'm searching? Maybe I have to search the other symptoms as well. Um, headache. Can be caused by alcohol, certain foods, changes in or lack of sleep, poor posture, skip meals and stress. You were guilty of, of a few of these. How to treat. Rest in a quiet dark room, hot or cold compress on your forehead or neck. Massage a small amounts of caffeine. Ibuprofen, 
plant from an aspirin. Maybe you should call a doctor now? Just when you are about to type in a number, your hand seizes up. Your phone falls onto the couch. What was that? You hesitate. You dropped your phone from a little muscle cramp. You've had those before. Whatever bug you've caught will probably pass by tomorrow morning. You get yourself some tea, a slice of toast and rest for today. <clears throat> day five. You slept through an entire day, but you still feel weak when you wake up. You drink some tea and wonder if you should eat something, but you decide it would probably be better to wait it out until tomorrow and give your stomach some time to rest. It would be a waste of food if you had to throw up again. You drag yourself to the fireplace and make a fire. You make yourself comfortable on the couch and watch the flames. They sway from left to right and if you aren't careful, you could get lost in their hypnotic dance. You start to feel lonely. Even as you enjoy looking at the flames, you miss your mother's chicken soup that she cooked whenever you got sick. You snuggle even deeper into the blankets. Why did you have to get sick all alone out in the woods? Your mind drifts off and you look around the room in a daze. Is the room getting bigger? Maybe you just imagined it? <laughs> it's alright, I'm here. You force yourself upright and seize the fireplace poker, brandishing in it in front of you while you search for the source of the voice. You could have sworn it was right next to you. But there's no one else in this room. After that happened the other day, you checked, you've checked as much. Of course, you're the only one here, right? You back into a corner so at least you aren't ambushed from behind. Then you take out your phone and try to call for help. No. Oh. An intense pain wells up in your head. Oh, you jolt in pain and let go of your phone. It hits the ground, bounces once, then falls flat. You tremble as you kneel down to retrieve it. You sigh when you see that your phone is still intact. Okay, whatever just made its presence known seems to like it doesn't want you to call for help. You don't care. Your thumb hovers over the dial pad. You're going to make that call. Call the police. <clears throat> that won't help. You nearly throw your phone out of fear, but you stop yourself in time. You only feel a little pain. Tears roll down your cheeks. You hate this voice. It's swimming in your head. It's seizing up your hand. It's like controlling you. No, no. Now you sound delusional. What voice? You mean thinking, right? That's what everyone does. You're just fighting your own intuition, aren't you? You close your phone and just go to bed. You hope this ends soon. Day 6. When you open your eyes, you're not sure what you're looking at. Colours? Patterns? Why can't you focus? <laughs> Good morning. Panic floods your body. There, at the foot of your bed, grins a ghoulishly coloured man. Who is he? How did he break in? You snatch a nearby pillow and throw it at the intruder, but it sails right through him. You stare in sheer disbelief. Are you a ghost? No, no, I'm a living being. We met in the lake. I was looking for a place to multiply and you were just so warm and so nourishing. I couldn't resist. And finally, you can see me. He leans forward. <laughs> Hi, I'm an amoeba. I think you humans call me Naglaria Fowlery? So I'm starting to see things. I need help. Wait. Are you getting a doctor? Of course. So you're trying to get rid of me? You feel intense pain as a new wave sends you in agony. How could you? We need to stay together. Don't you understand? Okay, wait, wait, please. Calm down. I won't do it. Good. The pain disappears. You feel even weaker than before. Exhausted, you lay back down on the bed. 
he's an amoeba he's in your head and he sprouted more and more of him to root around in your brain and the pain is killing you killing you so wait aren't i just going to die then he doesn't answer immediately don't say it like that marlo isn't it wonderful we get to spend time together you have a hard time wrapping your head around this situation, but what you do know is that you're in bad shape. And this thing won't let you call for help. Did it have to be me? Wasn't there a better place for you? No, never. Well, of course, it's rare for my kind to infect humans. But I see it as a sign, and you know what I saw when I got closer to your brain? Your wish for a family, Marlo. It's as strong as mine. He comes closer and put his head on my stomach. This is where a baby would grow, right? What the frick? <laughs> Too much. He breathes in deeply. Is this how a fetus in a womb feels? Why would they ever leave their mother's body? It's so warm and comforting inside you humans. A shadow runs through your body. You want to hit him and push him away, even though you know your hands would phase through him. To make this new family arrangement easier for you, I'll even let you call me Niall. Like your unrequited love from your university days? He can dig into your memories? I can offer you everything you couldn't have, but always wanted. Why are you frowning? Not happy? You put on your poker face. Who would have thought that your days dealing with rude stakeholders would come in handy for something like this? No, it sounds good. Really good. <laughs> right? But suddenly he smace up uh, he smace Jesus. <laughs> Shut up <clears throat> His smile fades. He stands up and looks at you with worry. You were getting weaker. And you were enjoying yourself so much too. It made me smile. Was that drink you had white wine? Yes. Sorry, I clicked that too quickly. I wish I could drink that with you. It's something you humans do with each other, right? Well, I guess we just have to take what we can. Hmm. Is there something we could do together? Oh, how about I sit with you at the dinner table? Is this him? Playing house with you? Why should I play house with someone like you? Oh my god, this is so weird. Um... Yeah, let's go with that one. What? Why do you have to be so rude about it? He comes closer and sits on the bed. Slowly he caresses your face. Do we already have to talk about how we should communicate? I just... Your throat closes. My presence seems to have this effect on you. How about we stay calm, alright? You nod, your throat opens up and you immediately cough and gasp for air. Shh, it's alright. It's alright. Now, let's go to the dining table, alright? You need your breakfast after all. You walk to the kitchen while Niall follows you. You can feel his gaze on you. Your hand reaches for the pantry, but Niall interrupts you. You can't just eat bread alone. You're already weak, how about something more filling? I will also try to lessen the nausea, so please. For us, you clench your fist, that's rich coming from him. You turn to the fridge and take out some eggs. You're fine if I make some scrambled eggs, right? Yeah, that sounds better. The pain and nausea have truly lessened. Seems like if you humor him, you can at least keep your head clear enough to think. You hear Niall hum as you crack open some eggs and turn on the stove. Curiosity gets the better of you and you glance at him as the eggs sizzle. He 
He sits on a chair at the dining table, swaying left and right, happily waiting for you to finish cooking. What is this madness? This peaceful scene unnerves you more than anything, but you play along for now. After you choke some bites down, he leans forward in excitement. <laughs> it tastes better with company, right? Um, I guess we play along, otherwise he'll probably kill us. <laughs> Absolutely, you're really sweet too. <laughs> he continues to hum. I'm happy there are at least some things we can do together. Hmm, what else? Oh, is it possible for us to watch something together later? I saw glimpses of, what was it? Movie dates in your memory? My phone is a little small for us to watch something together. Oh, okay. With mixed feelings, you turn back to your plate. Thankful he at least lets you eat in peace until you're finished. You clean up and begin to fidget as you're not sure how Niall wants to continue the day. Suddenly you get goosebumps and slump down. You heave, a wave of nausea surging through. Oh no, I thought I could give you more time. Um, he reaches for your arm but it goes right through. I wish I could help you stand. After a few seconds your nausea dissipates. How can you survive this situation? What should you do? Is there a way to be rid of him? Let's get back to bed, alright? You both shuffle back to the bedroom. You lay down in bed and Niall sits beside you. He strokes your hair as you gradually fall asleep. Day 7 You hardly slept and still feel weak. Your neck is very stiff and the weird colours appear again before your eyes. Oh, you're awake. Good morning, dear. Oh, wow. You turn your head and see multiple Niles next to the bed. You suppress the urge to scream. Here, I wanted to show you what our children inside you look like. Oof, that's so creepy. There's even one that looks like you. Uh, here. What the hell? He puts a blob of blue mass on your lap. The way it gurgles and cries, it sounds desperately like a human baby. It coughs and some blue spit runs down its cheek. Isn't it cute? That's actually quite fucking terrifying. What the hell? Oh, I don't know what to say to that. Um, yeah, it's absolutely precious. You try to hug it, but you can't touch it. You are desperate to make him happy. I'm so glad you like it. It's our family after all. He takes the baby back. Come get breakfast once you're ready. You seem weaker today, so I'll stay silent while you sleep a bit more, alright? You nod and lay down. After a few hours, you reluctantly sit up. Your grumbling stomach won't shut up. While you walk to the kitchen, you assess your situation and try to think of a plan. Nile won't let you call a doctor nor other help. He loves acting like a husband to you. If you humor him, he will try to lessen the effects of the infection. But if he stays, you will certainly die. You arrive in the kitchen and Nile shows himself. So have you have, do you have enough strength to eat now? Great. How do I get out of this? Is there a way to somehow use his fixation on family against him? A slight headache interrupts your thoughts. What are you thinking so hard about? It's like something is moving around inside your head. What, what are you doing? I just want to know what you're thinking. You try your hardest to think of something positive about Niall. You can't risk him seeing what you truly think. A lovely day to spend with my Niall. <laughs> Oh, you're a charmer. He sounds absolutely delighted. The headache disappears and you sigh in relief. I think somewhere in your memories it said a little caffeine helps when you have a headache. Yeah, coffee sounds great right now. You put a kettle on and shake some instant coffee into your mug. Then you take your yogurt cup from the fridge and get a spoon. 
Nano's eyes glimmer with excitement, as if he expects you to do some magic tricks. <laughs> Is yogurt good? Yeah, it's sweet. It's cold and refreshing. After a while, you start to play with your spoon. Maybe it's better if you only eat a bit. You don't want to get your upset, uh, get your stomach upset. Come on, eat a little more. We have more mouths to feed, after all. The reminder makes you drop your spoon. What's wrong? Him, everything about him and what he does to you. You stare at him with wide open eyes. You bite down hard on your lips to hold yourself back from giving him a piece of your mind. Are you angry? No, no, I know you're just worried. Well, we both want you to be healthy, right? So I'm allowed to be worried about you, right? Sure, this is a nightmare. When the water is ready, you pour some into your mug. After adding some milk, you mix the coffee and drink it. Do you feel a little better? Yes. There's palpable tension between you two. Niall makes the first move, putting his hand on yours. Here, this might cheer you up. You see blue shapes glow and dance in the space between your hands. Do you like it? You slowly nod. Oddly, this beautiful dance of colours comforts you. It pains you that he seems to care despite being the cause of your suffering. Do you want to spend time together in the living room? Maybe watch the fire in the fireplace? <sighs> Niall sighs. Maybe some sleep will help. I hope we can do something together tomorrow, Marlo. Now, let's go. He walks beside you as you go back to your bedroom. Tomorrow you have to get it together, no matter what it takes. Day 9 You wake up in your weakest state yet. Your skull feels full and ready to burst. Your heavy limbs struggle to move on command. Your breathing is dry and ragged and you're attacked by shivers for, from a sweltering fever. You don't have much time left. You steal yourself and decide that you have to push through no matter how upset he gets. You have to at least try. In your dizzy state, you look up and there he is. Hi. Good morning. You wish dearly that he would just leave your body. He acts like a husband and wants to be a father. What a disgusting display of this fake family. Wait, a father? Niall, I have a question. Yeah? He strokes your hair as he speaks. How you wish you could smack his hand away. Why do you want to be a father? Hmm. Well, I sort of already am, right? I believe I'm pretty good at it. Um. Yes, you are a wonderful father, Niall. <laughs> Thank you, Marlo. I'm glad you think so too. We are a wonderful family. He gives you a kiss on the forehead. But no lips touch your skin, only a tingling flare of heat. He's just an imaginary husband after all. You haven't really moved much. Are you too weak to stand up today? Is it even too hard to talk now? How about I dig deeper and see for myself? You feel something pushing and pulling inside of your head. Uh, show a memory of a relative who was struggling before their death. Maybe now I will show you mercy. You are just exhausted at this point. Marlo, are you this tired? You nod. I beg you, make the pain stop. Niall looks over you with worry, pacing around the room, chewing a fingernail. How about... He puts a hand on your forehead. Does this make you feel better? No, what are you trying to do? I saw a glimpse of your memory once of when you were little. I believe your mother did this for you when you were sick as well. <laughs> Silly you, I had a fever then, not an infection. Guilt flashes across his face, but he shakes his head and affection returns to his gaze. I think, I will think of a way. For now, sleep, my dear. With the last of your energy spent, you drift off into a deep slumber. Day 10. Your breathing is shallow as you wake up in your bed. Patterns dance in front of your eyes and you hear Niall humming. 
You know, he's not real, but you still feel his warmth next to you. Is it comforting? Are you scared? It doesn't matter anymore. All you know is that you're experiencing him. Hope is gone from your mind. You can't tell illusions from reality anymore. You turn your head towards Niall and try to focus your eyes on him. <laughs> oh, how beautiful. He reaches out to you and caresses your hair. You must have turned and tossed a lot in your sleep. The bed sheet. Okay, that's not creepy at all. Maybe this is the only way we can marry. Ew. <laughs> I know we don't have a lot of time. I feel you getting weaker by the second. But don't worry. I am with you. Okay. You feel him wrap you in his embrace. You never imagined that death would feel so warm. You slowly close your eyes as you hear Niall humming the wedding march. Did I seriously just die? Wow. Well, there you go, guys. Parasite in love. That was very... I really enjoyed it. But at the same time, it was very... Um, very eerie and creepy in a way, I guess. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in another one. Thank you. Bye.